this conference has been marked by a theme of crossing over into the promises of God, taking inheritance, possessing the land, possessing the promises of God. And as we've testified, there's been such a wonderful flow of the Holy Spirit touching people's lives, even with word and refreshment and confirmation words of the promises of God, breakthroughs and healing that God has done. And we celebrate the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, you are so welcome. We are absolutely committed to you and dependent on you to minister this morning the words of truth. We open our hearts and minds and receive your word. And I pray, Lord, help me think through my thoughts and speak through my lips in Jesus' name. Amen. So in the light of that, I would like to turn your attention to Joshua and chapter number 3, verses 14 to 17. I'm going to read for us. It says, So it was when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as those who bore the Ark came to Jordan, and the feet of the priests who bore the Ark dipped in the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflows all its banks during the whole time of harvest, that the waters which came down from the upstream stood still and rose in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zaraton. So the waters that went down into the sea of Arabah, the salt sea, fell and were cut off, and the people crossed over opposite Jericho, then the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel crossed over on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. Say with me, miracle. <laughs> miraculous crossing. Yes, miraculous crossing. Who knows that we need a miracle sometimes to cross over, to cross through, to inherit, to take possession. So as we look at this, it is a message, a shadow and a type for the church, for the body of Christ in this season. God is for us and He is behind us and He's pushing us into our destiny. He wants us to take possession of all the promises that have been released over many years concerning our lives, concerning the church, and concerning our nation. Amen? Amen. So if I speak and bring this message, I want you to see three contexts to this. It is for the whole, for the body of Christ. It is for the individual, that includes your family, and it is for our nation. All three contexts. If we look at the scripture, firstly, what stands out is the ark, the presence of God, the person and power of the Holy Spirit. You see, often we see the promise, we engage with the promise, but we want to cross without the presence of the Lord. Come on. We want to cross in self effort, in own works, in own ideas. Instead of allowing the presence of God to come upon us and then to move with the presence of God, did Moses not say to God, Lord, unless you move with us, we do not move? Because, friends, your success in taking possession of the promises is directly linked to the, pre the presence of God, the person of the Holy Spirit. That's why we need to be those people that are sensitive towards the presence of the Holy Spirit and who invite and host the presence of the Holy Spirit. How do we do this practically? You know, I found after 22 years in ministry now 
there's one thing that absolutely always touches the heart of God. Worship. It's like an ice cream to my daughter. She can't say no to it. When you bring worship, God cannot say no. It attracts Him. It involves Him. It causes Him to inhabit, to take possession of. So the presence of God is essential to you moving through, crossing over, because the presence brings the miraculous. Come on. Secondly, we need to take note of the fact that like with Israel, God did not allow slaves to inherit the promises. Those who saw themselves as slaves died in the desert. The next generation that was born free, that's not the hippies, that were born free, took inheritance. So if you are a son and a daughter of God, and you're born free by the Spirit of God, you qualify. But if you have a slave mentality, that I'm just here to slave away and to serve away and have nothing of my own, you will not inherit, you will not take possession. You need to come out of that mentality, into the mentality of God. God sees us as sons and daughters. We've just had this wonderful worship song. I'm not a slave. I will not fear. Amen. I fear in a good way the presence and the person of God. I respect God tremendously, but I'm not afraid of Him. I'm not. I've told the Lord, you can surprise me in any way. You can rock up anywhere. You can reveal yourself in any way to me, even if it kills me. It's okay. And once it almost did. The Lord visited me in my lounge, and it was so tremendous, His presence, that it felt like the flesh was tearing away from my body. And I was so stupid. I said, stop. And He stopped. Stupid. Should have just let Him continue. So my wife says, and then we pick nothing up the next morning. I said, that's okay. I'll be with God. So there's a place where we enter in to a son and a daughter mentality. I'm not a slave. I'm born free. I'm born into the liberty of God's Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. Then also we need to look at the fact that the priests were the people carrying the presence of God. Bringing the miraculous and causing, catch this, people to cross over. Often we only have ourselves in mind in taking possession. Friends, we have not only the opportunity, but we have the responsibility to bring our nation into the promises of God. Come on. No, it's by a stilly. Come on. The priests were the ones that could carry the presence. I've got good news. The Word of God in the book of Peter and Revelation calls you a priest unto your God. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So the priestly ministry in our lives allows us to cross over in difficulties, in circumstance, in opposition, and to bring the miraculous move of the presence of God that breaks open into the promises of God. But the priestly ministry is key. What does a priest do primarily? We often get this wrong. We see the serving part of the sacrificial side. That's true. The primary part of the priest's ministry is to minister unto the Lord. Come on. How often do you minister unto the Lord? Love on Him. Just throw yourself on Him. Let me say this. How often do you waste your time on Him? What are you doing? Killing time with God. Not with the television. Let me encourage you. God will help you if you have a problem with your time. I once said, God, I have a bit of a problem. And then He said to me, yes, I see you like television. 
Yes, I do. And then my trailer vision went away like, no signal, no DSTV, nothing. I had the technicians there. They said, sir, we've got no idea what's going on here, but we can't fix this. <laughs> so God gave me 14 days of no television, just time with God, loving on God, spending time in His presence. So then they fixed it, restored it, and as I put the TV on, I said, this is boring. Come on. We need to minister unto the Lord that we may host the presence. That through the presence we may bring ourselves, our families, friends. I say this with great, great, great meaning and concern. Our nation into the promises of God. God has a purpose with this nation. God has plans for this nation. But the enemy has also got a plan for this nation. God calls upon us to bring people through, to bring this nation through into the promises of God. Not many people know this. In the year of 2007, the Lord sent me to French Hook. Long story short, eventually I ended up there on the uh, Paul Mountain at the, but the Tall Monument. Come on, the Afrikaans for the Tall Monument. And I was standing there, I was saying, God, I really need to know, besides the fact you, you wanted me to minister to a specific couple in, in this church that served there, why am I really here? And it was a clear, open sky day. And he had me look, and I saw Table Mountain from there. I didn't even know you could see it. And he said, it is the promised land. So I thought, I'm coming to the Cape. And the JC said last night, Kijk hier berg, mama. <laughs> and I knew I had a problem. My wife loves the Cape, but she hates the weather. And I said, God, what are you really saying? He said, the promises started in the Cape as my people arrived. Those promises are still in place. It is time to take possession of those promises. This land has been dedicated to the Lord. Although we don't realize it. So we need to take possession. This is the promised land. This is not the only land that has promise. That's not what I'm saying. But to me, in this context, God is saying, this is the promised land. Take possession. Interesting to note, as the water was stopped into walls of restriction for dry ground to form, it calls out a specific city called Adam, where the cutoff started by God. And then the other area was cut off at a place with the name of Zaratan, which means pierced. So where Adam ends, the flesh, the carnal, the sin. And God makes a way, miraculously, through the piercing of His Son. That's where we cross through. Our victory is in the cross. In the knowledge and revelation of what the cross proclaims, what it did. It is finished. It is complete. Victory is yours. But it comes through the piercing of the wounds of Jesus. That's where we cross through. Can't do it if you don't do it through the cross. Through the revelation of the beautiful good news message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So at Zaratin, where the piercing is, there was a crossing taking place. God made a way. Who knows God has made a way through the tearing of the flesh of the body of Christ. Which gives us free access to God and to all His promises. To take hold of them, to take possession of them. 
the priestly ministry of ministering unto the Lord had much to do with thanksgiving and praise. He inhabits the praises of His people, does He not? Word says, you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. So are the gates open of Cape Town? The gates of praise. So that the King of Glory can come in. One of our prophetic team members had a vision about the glory of God coming over Leucorp and settling in Cape Town and then from there, from here releasing the glory of God. We are in a very significant time. We are at a place of crossing over. Three months ago, I shared this with JC as well, and he even preached on this, I heard from him, that God is bringing a wave that's coming, and we need to learn to surf. Fortunately, not in the natural, <laughs> but in the spirit, is to get onto that wave, to cross over into what God has through His fullness that He has planned. The supreme value of heaven, I'm using a Bill Johnson quote here, had the privilege of meeting him, what a blessing, is the presence of God. The supreme value of heaven is the presence of God. That's the highest value. That's how high God values His presence. Trying to cross without God's presence could even be fatal. Some people decide, I've had enough. I don't see the promises manifest. We are moving to New Zealand. And if God has told you to move, bless you. If He's released you to go, bless you with the presence of God. But then they press through and they try to take possession of their promises in a place that God has not called them to. Where the presence of the Lord is not going with them into that. And they end up getting hurt. By God. No, by the enemy. Come on. So we need to cross with the plan and the presence of God. With praise in our hearts and thanksgiving. We need to hear from God. Very important. JC mentioned that. How important it is to hear God and then respond, uh, respond accordingly by faith. Let me summarize this a bit, a bit, and then we go to the second part. When we step out from a lowly place of humility as a freeborn son, why a lowly place? Because the Jordan is the lowest place on planet Earth. And wichte boos hier speel. Die Jordan refeer is die laagste plek op die aarde. It's the lowest place where we cross through, not the high place. It's when a nation is at its lowest that it crosses through with the presence of God. Not when it's at its height, at its highest. So when we step out from a lowly place of humility as a freeborn son or daughter, carrying the presence of Holy Spirit in the priestly ministry of thanksgiving and praise, recognizing and celebrating the piercing power of the cross, as victory, we start taking possession of the promises of God that He's given us, that He's given this nation, that He's given your family. Even in the adversity of the presence of giants of intimidation, because on the other side you'll find giants. Trust me. Oh, we're going to cross over and inherit and take possession and then camp and rest and bry. <laughs> you will bry. Come on. You won't necessarily only have rest because the giants will be there that you will face. Do you really think the enemy just says, ah, that's okay, they've crossed over, let them just take everything? No, 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 no. So you need to release and activate your faith and stay in faith in celebrating what God has already done. Now I want to turn this a little bit around and say, did you know that God has promised ground? God has unfulfilled promises that has been made to Him. 
Have you ever made promises to God? He's looking for fulfillment in that. When you gave your life to God through Christ the Lord and His sacrifice, you became part of His promised ground, of His promises that He wants to see fulfilled. The understanding of this lies within this specific concept. His ambition. What is God's ambition? Who's got ambition here? Who's aspiring to something? You're a helper, I believe. <laughs> you have to have ambition and aspire to greater things. Come on. You can't just stay where you are. That's stagnation. That's the Dead Sea. That has no life in it. Colossians 1, 26 and 27 says, This ambition is rooted in a mystery. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to His saints. To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Did you know we serve a mysterious God? That there's mysteries that we don't understand. Come on. Mysteries. Things that the Holy Spirit does that we say, this doesn't really make sense to me. It's a mystery. But yet it's God. There's a mystery that's hidden inside of us. Christ, the hope of glory in us. I wonder if you're going to realize this, but I'm going to help you. Say, I am. I am. God's promised ground. His ambition is to reside in me, to take possession of me, of us and our nation. That's God's ambition, that He would be amongst His people, in His people, and reveal Himself through His people, even to a nation. I absolutely believe this irrevocably. This nation will have a Christian government that fears God. I have no doubt in my mind that it's coming, because it's God's will. It's His desire wants to take up residence in the union buildings, in the parliament. Come on. But it's impossible. So was the crossing of the Jordan. So was taking possession in the midst of giants of the land. So was defeating Jericho. Come on. God made it possible by His presence, by His inhabitation. Let me make a little bit of a practical explanation to this, to maybe help you. In the year of 2012, maybe you've heard my testimony about this, I'll keep it short, but nevertheless, may it help you and bless you and edify you. In 2012, God sent me to Washington, D.C. Twelve years before that, He gave me a prophetic word. Who knows sometimes we need to wait on God for fulfillment. That doesn't mean it has to take 12 years. It, I've had prophetic word that's taken three days to be fulfilled completely. But anyway, I said, okay, Lord, you've said Washington, D.C. I'm not going to explain everything that led up to that, the training that was needed, the fact that I couldn't speak English and my wife had to order food and, and, and. God throwing me into an all-English-speaking congregation and training me there and so forth. So I go to Washington, D.C., and God opens a way for me to go to the White House. I thought I was going to see the president. No, I was there to see the White House. And God says, prophesy into this house. In this house, I will establish my government. I will raise a man who will fear me. He will bring back my word, my truth, to this nation, to the schools. Prophesy my presence into this house. My word into this house. 
worship in this house. And from this house, I will govern this land. I didn't know what God was meaning by this. I was just believing it and speaking it and prophesying it as a promise of God that that nation needs to be brought into. Well, not so long after that, there was a man elected to office as president called Donald Trump. What's the first thing he did? When he took office, he called a prayer meeting. Second thing, read out of the Bible. Third thing, invited counsel from Christian leaders. Fourth thing, he took out all the Muslim books, put them in trucks and drove them out of the White House. Then invited a worship meeting there. They pray every day in the White House. They worship there every week. And he receives Holy Spirit counsel every week from a council of church leaders in that nation. Why? Because God has the ability to stop the plan of the enemy, to stop the waters. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard against it and have his people cross over on dry ground into the promises that God has for them. Amen? Amen. I've been to America now again for three weeks. Everything is going better in America. Everything. Not great, but better. A lot of criticism against the president and a lot of celebration of him as well. There's two sides. He has a desire and ambition to take residence even in the White House. Even in the union buildings. Is it possible? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Take residence, not only in our nation, but in our homes. I'm God's promised land. He wants to take possession of everything He's planned for me, everything He's destined me for, and reveal Himself in me and through me and to me. One of my greatest desires is that God would meet me in my home with His glory and stay there. Just want to phone into the office and say, I'm not coming in for a week. (laughs) God and I, we together here in this house. I once had a little bit of an experience of that. One day I was doing Bible study in my office that's just adjacent to the home. And I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit, then it went away. And I was working, was very busy. We can be so busy that we miss God. Because busyness sometimes makes us feel significant. Come on. Whilst our significance is in our identity in Him. And then I smelled this very, very strong, sweet smell of roses in my office. And I was like, Who's using air spray? There was no one at home. It was just me. And it left and then came back. That sweet smell of roses. Very strong and overwhelming smell. And I was like, God, is this you? I heard a whisper, yes, come. And then the presence of that smell went from my office through the bright area, can you believe it, (laughs) into the home. And I followed the presence, the smell, and it increased and increased and increased. And then the next moment, it's like God just stopped, and I walked into Him. (laughs) Standing in Him, in His presence, in that smell, and it was like time went by. Everything around me just disappeared for that moment. And I said, God, you smell so good. You smell so wonderful. Your smell, your presence is overwhelming. Please stay. Don't go. You are here always, but let your presence stay. So I thought I'll, I'll have a bit of fun. The Lord and I. So I said, Lord, just stay here. As my family came home from work and school, 
the Lord was there with me in the lounge. As they came in, they were like a little bit upset about their days, and they walked into the presence of God and like, Dad, what's going on? <laughs> Sit down. Relax. Next moment, they started smelling that presence, resting in it. All the keys and burdens just disappear. I would like for God to stay in that manifesting way in my home every day, always. So I've said I would like people to drive by and be arrested by the presence of God. My wife said, we don't have enough space. <laughs> because his ambition is to take up residence, to possess. But he does so through invitation. Does so through our praise, our worship, our worship sacrifices unto him. But you and I have such beautiful promises of God in His Word, in prophetic words that God wants to fulfill. And I encourage you today, do not let go of the promises of God. There were days that I thought, oh, okay, is America ever going to come? Come on, it's 12 years. It's a long time. It came. It came. God is true to His word. Afrikaans, hy is a waarmaker van sy woord. Hy hou wacht oor dit om het te volbring. Hy is nie een mens dat hy so lieg nie, so hy iets sê en dit nie doen nie. Yet we think he, he will say something and not do it. No, he's God. But exactly like JC said last night, he's waiting for us. You see, something had to happen with the priests. They had the presence. They had the mandate, they had the vision, they had the promises. But the word there says, as soon as their feet touch the water, God started drying up the ground, creating walls to separate the water from them. What does that speak of? Faith. Five steps, five action. In this conference, you've received new words, old words confirmed Words refreshed, promises grounded, that you know this is where God's going with me. These are the promises of God. I had a brother here testify this morning again to me how God so wonderfully came through and honored His word and prophetic promise, even in the time that He said He would, and established Him in business. But there was a step of faith. Come on. Without faith it is impossible to please God. He's waiting for us to step out in faith, to trust Him, to believe Him, but to do it with His presence, with His residing, powerful, manifest presence in our lives, not just on our own, because He wants to be involved. He wants to be with us in it. I honestly believe that we are going to see the fulfillment of God's promises in a faster momentum than ever before, because there's coming an acceleration of the Holy Spirit upon the promises of God, upon our nation. Come on. We're going to stand amazed when we see what God has done in our nation. We're at the lowest point. We're at the Jordan. Come on, our economy is at its lowest. Government is at its Lowest energy supply at its <laughs> lowest. <laughs> Especially in Gauteng, trust me. We always need a backup plan for takeaways because you never know when you have electricity. <laughs> because God wants us to cross through at that low point into the promises that He has made, but with His presence. With His presence. Not without it. Amen. If it's okay with you, take someone's hand. You're going to spend eternity with them anyway. <laughs> so get used to them. Father, today we come together in our hearts. We have a declaration that we will be those people, that generation, that 
Lord does not drop the ball, but takes possession of every single promise for our lives, our families, and our nation. I release your presence. The manifest presence of the Holy Spirit that is hosted in our lives. To take hold of us, to go with us, and that we move by faith. The faith of Jesus that speak those things that are not as though they are. And move into every possession of promise in our lives, our generation and nation. In Jesus' mighty name, I bless these people that their prophetic words would ignite in them faith, but also presence and ability in the Holy Spirit to go all out, full out, all the way for everything that you've promised to them. I come against the spirit of despondency, that spirit of negativity and criticism, And I break it over their lives. I pray, give us a sensitivity to be spirit-led always in every decision we make. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, JC.